this video, we will look at a methodical approach to identify various types of simple epithelial tissues in H&E stained sections. Before we begin identification of various epithelial tissues, there are certain steps that are required to be followed to facilitate the correct identification of the tissue. Firstly, place the slide on the stage under the low power objective. Then use the coarse adjustment knob to focus onto the tissue. Identify the junction of the free space or the lumen and the tissue. Then centralize the identified area using stage controls. After that, turn to high power objective. Here on, only use the fine adjustment knob to focus. Do not use the coarse adjustment knob or else you'll end up breaking the slide. Finally, continue with the identification of the tissue. As we saw earlier that in order to identify the epithelial tissue, we should look for the junction of any free space with the visible tissue on the slide. Now, as we can see on this slide, there is lots and lots of free space and there are interspersed thin layers of tissue. So there wouldn't be a problem identifying the epithelium in this slide. Now we'll just move on to a magnified view of the same. Now on zooming in, we can see that these multiple free spaces are roughly in a honeycomb pattern and are separated by very thin layers of tissue. In fact, they appear as having only a single layer of cells and we can make out that these darkly stained nuclei are actually flattened, which is typical of squamous epithelia. So we can make out that this slide is the typical appearance of a section of lung and these free spaces are actually the alveoli which are separated by layers of squamous epithelial tissue. Now when we look at this slide it seems quite difficult to identify any free space but on careful observation we can see minute areas of free space surrounding small patches of tissue as you can see here. So let us zoom in on one of these areas. Now on zooming in we can clearly identify the free space which was not very visible in the low power and we can also see various types of cells on either side of these free spaces. But what we need to look at are these flattened cells which are on the junction of the free space and tissue. If you can make out these flattened cells, these are typical of squamous epithelium. Now let us try and zoom in a little bit more. Now if you can identify these flattened nuclei, you can understand that these represent the squamous epithelial cells which are at the junction of this free space and the tissue on this side. So this picture is a typical representation of the Bowman's capsule of the kidney. So this layer of epithelium is the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule and this free space is actually the urinary space and the tissue in the center is nothing but the glomerulus. So this section was from the kidney and the thing to look out for in this are the squamous epithelial cells forming the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule. Now this slide is another example of the junction between the free space and the tissue. And as you can see, the flattened nuclei, these represent the squamous epithelium 
that is forming the junction between this free space and the tissue. And so this epithelium is probably the mesothelium. Now, cuboidal epithelium is relatively easier to identify, and that is because of the spherical nuclei, which are mostly centrally located. And in this slide, you can even see the outlines of the cells, which appear rather cubical. So this is probably the duct of a small exocrine gland, and it is lined by a simple cuboidal epithelium. Now this is another example of cuboidal epithelium. As you can see, several rounded nuclei, which are typical of cuboidal epithelium. And you can see the rounded nuclei in two layers. That means there are two layers of cuboidal epithelium. However, the point to note is that this is not a stratified epithelium. In fact, each of these layers enclose free space of their own. For example, in this layer encloses this free space, whereas this layer of cuboidal epithelium encloses this free space. This is typical of the thyroid gland in which these cuboidal epithelial layers form the outline of the thyroid follicles. And this free space is actually the follicular space which is filled with colloid. So this is a typical example of simple cuboidal epithelium and the follicular cells of the th thyroid gland are the cuboidal epithelial cells. Now again in this slide, we need to observe the junction of the free space and the tissue. So let us zoom in a bit. Here you can clearly see the presence of oblong or oval shaped nuclei which are present in a single layer. And zooming in more, you can clearly see the columnar shaped cells with the oval nuclei which are rather more towards the basal surface of the cells. So this is a typical example of simple columnar epithelium. Now here is another example. You can see these slightly oval shaped nuclei. But also what you can see is the clear demarcation of the epithelial cells which are columnar in shape having more height than the width. So again, this is a typical example of simple columnar epithelium. <laughs> 